Hey guys, it's me Malobi. Um, I thought I'd make a quick video on Phonio. Uh, I'm gonna try and put in as much information as I can on this. I haven't got any notes written out or anything. So if I miss out some vital information, please don't be mad at me, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna do my best here. Um, so Phonio, what is Phonio? Phonio is a grain. Um, the scientific name is Digitaria exilis, for those of you that might be interested in that for some reason. Um, so Grisphonio, it grows in the Sahel region of Africa. So the Sahel region is the belt just below the Sahara that crosses all the way from West Africa to East Africa. So the Sahel is sort of in the northern parts of Nigeria and Senegal and um, actually south of Senegal, um, northern parts of Benin, Ghana, etc. And this grain has been cultivated for thousands of years. In fact, it's one of the oldest grains to be ever cultivated by mankind. And it's really, really interesting because now we are seeing a resurgence of this grain. You know, the way I learned about Phonio is through, um, I guess you could call them a uh, naturopath, I guess. I, th I think that would be the word. So uh, Dr. Sebi, he sort of opened my eyes towards Phonio by talking about it. You know, he had a recommended food list and Phonio just happened to be one of them. Um, and once I started digging, I started learning about this amazing grain. So I guess the, the first thing to talk about would be from that aspect, from the health um, and naturopathic element of Phonio. Um, when you do the numbers, when you look into the nutritional facts of Phonio, you'll learn that it's a very high in iron, very high in protein as well. It's got some essential amino acids that, you know, you don't find in most other grains. It's also gluten-free. So, you know, some of you that might like grains like couscous but have a gluten intolerance or whatever, Phonio is an amazing alternative. It's also low in the glycemic index. Actually, I'll tell you a quick story. So I met a guy, I was uh, on a taxi with him before I flew to Senegal, and he was telling me all these amazing, amazing things about Phonio. And he told me that a lot of people, or not a lot of people, a few people in Senegal, they actually leave the cities and move to the villages just so that they can eat more Phonio. That's, that's how healthy it is. And these people that have diabetes, they want to lose weight, they want to be healthier, they actually leave the city, they start eating phonia in the villages, and their blood sugar count just drops. So people actually change their lifestyles and where they live just to eat more phonia. That just shows you how healthy and how powerful it is for the people that actually know what it is. Um, during my trip across West Africa, I learned a lot about phonia. But one thing that really surprised me is that although there are some countries that eat more phonio than others, phonio is not really a, a, a staple for us, any specific countries in Africa, which which was a bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, in Guinea, there is a lot of phonio eaten and produced, but, um, you know, when you go to the capital cities, you know, rice just seems to be a staple, which is kind of crazy when you understand how much healthier and tastier phonio is. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the health bits. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the environmental aspects, which is also quite interesting. So because it grows in the Sahel region, it shows that Phonio is actually a drought resistant crop. So as you're aware, you know, climate change is a bit of an issue. There's, you know, droughts in the northern parts of certain West African countries. There's a lot of migration. So Phonio can be used to rehabilitate and create more food and nourishment to people that are actually living in these areas that are suffering droughts, which is which is an actually amazing thing. Um, I think that's something that I was particularly excited about. Um, so that's kind of the health aspect. We've spoken about the uh, environmental aspect. Um, but also I think that, you know, Phonio can, can be something for, for West Africa. You know, quinoa had its moment. You know, people all of a sudden started learning about quinoa. Um, expectations grew. People started growing quinoa, in, in, in both in South America and in Britain as well. And so quinoa has become sort of a, a South American um, superfood that has helped to alleviate a lot of poverty, create jobs for a lot of farmers in these communities. And it has brought a lot of money to these areas where people were not earning as much money and they can engage in international trade and bring more and more investment into their country and I think for me that's one of the most important parts about the Phonio story. 
we can use Phonio to create a new society, uh, Phonio to create more health and wealth in West African region. This can be something that we can use to give more money to people that are suffering in these regions. And this is why I've taken it as my personal mission to make, to shout it on the hilltops really, and just get people just talking about Phonio. I want everyone to try some Phonio. I'm gonna be doing markets, I'm gonna be selling online, I'm gonna be talking about it. So yeah, just um, just get, get yourself some Phonio, man. Just try it, eat it, see what you feel like. Ever since I started eating Phonio, I don't eat I don't eat rice anymore. I can't eat rice. It's it's like why would I downgrade myself to rice anymore if I can eat phonio? So upgrade your rice. Get yourself some phonio. Thank you and have a nice day.